new program, the Puerto Rico Research Hub. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Culture Pop. We have a great show lined up for you all tonight. Today we are chatting with Emily Enchanted, our executive producer caught up with indie pop band Grizz Folk. We also have an exclusive interview with Cody Co and Noelle Miller that you do not want to miss. Stay tuned. Hey, we're Grizz Folk and we're hanging out with Culture Pop. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'm Cody. I'm Cody. And I'm Noel. And I'm Noel. And we're, we're hanging, hanging out, out with, with Culture Pop. Pop. Hey, Culture Vultures. Welcome to Hot Topics, where we divulge juicy secrets from the pop culture world. Let's get started, shall we? Ariana Grande is up first. She released her album, We Were All So Eager to Hear. Thank you, next. This coming after the loss of Mac Miller and breakup with Pete Davidson. It landed quickly at number one on the Billboard 100s chart. This is our Ariana's fourth album to hit number one. Keep them coming, girl. Thank you, next. Valentine's Day just passed, and come on, did you really expect Kim Kardashian not to show us how much money their family has? Well, Kanye surprised Kim with a room full of roses and Kenny G, professional saxophonist. Kanye has truly given Kim every fantasy a girl could imagine. I couldn't even have thought of this one. Boys, please take note. Rapper 21 Savage has made headlines recently and was arrested on February 3rd by ICE stating that he was overstayed his visa. This came after a shock. This came as a shock, excuse me, to many of us as we thought he was originally from Atlanta. He remained in ICE's custody until February 13th when he was released on a $100,000 bond. To no surprise, Twitter's reaction to 21 Savage's arrest did not disappoint. But on a serious note, 21 Savage says this is taking this is bringing light to his situation he says my situation is important i represent poor black americans and i represent poor immigrant americans you got to think about all the millions of people that are in 21 savages shoes we also got to check out pop up pop rock up and coming this band coin this month and y'all this is it this band is comprised of chase lawrence ryan winnen and joe memel best known for their song talk too much we were ready for them to rock the show they and they did exactly that in orlando they stormed the stage and made us dance to every single song on their set list Songs like I Don't Want to Dance and Boyfriend Made Us Want to Dance All Night. This band is one to watch. And for our 90s kids out there, fresh off the press, Kenan Thompson has signed on to be the executive producer of one of my all-time favorite shows. Oh, 
that. On Nickelodeon, the show will start both old and new cast members. The show is slated to premiere this summer. This isn't the first show that Nickelodeon has brought back. Recently, we have seen their revival of Double Dare starring wildly famous influencer Lisa, Liza Koshy. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more on Culture Pop. Bored? Dragondama. It's the new ball in a cup like toy, unlike any other. The object is to get the ball in the bowl. It's really not that hard. What? Play it anytime, anywhere. Let the ball be your guide. Kendama. Product includes small cup, large cup, bottom cup, and spike. Find in the tour aisle or at kendama.com. The last few months have been crazy, so I had to call in some help. For, uh, from our executive producer, Ali, to fill in as anchor with up and coming indie pop band Grizzfolk while they were in Orlando this month. Let's take a look. We are here with Grizzfolk. Um, super excited. We're at the House of Blues. Um, if we could just do a roll call really quickly, go down the line, your name and your role in the band. I'm Sebastian, and I play keys. My name is Adam. I sing. I'm Frederick. I play the guitar. I'm Billy. I play the drums. I'm Ryan. I play bass. We're really excited to have you guys. Number one, you guys just released two songs. I've um, been listening to them. They're really great. I'm really excited. Um, how has the reaction been on tour lately, and how is it to release on the road? Uh, the reaction has been positive. Everyone seems to like it. And, uh, you know, we've been... Uh, playing them for the first time on this tour and it's it's been fun you know it's it's, it's humbling and it's like it's amazing when when you release a song and then you play it live and you actually see people singing along it's just it's an amazing feeling what has the writing process been compared to previous EPs compared to this and hopefully new music um, well I moved to Nashville about six months ago so we've, we've done a lot of the writing in Nashville and then we bring it back to LA and work with this producer, his name's Alan Blickley. And uh, so it's, it's been a little bit of that. We've also sort of been working with some other writers, that have been some guys in Nashville that are just really talented people that we uh, really respect as songwriters and producers. And so it's, it's, been, it's been more of a collaboration. So you guys are on tour with Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness. What are the highs and lows so far of the tour? One of the high points was um, I was playing in New Orleans. That was a really fun show. Um, but so was Dallas. So was Austin. So was Houston. So was Phoenix. So was Nashville. I don't know. Every show is great. Let's He's hope Orlando is great too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it will be. But these guys are great to tour with. Andrew and his whole band, his whole crew, and awesome. the floor guys as well. It's been a really fun tour. Awesome. So the song Heavy Crown has such like an introspective, laid-back feel. What is the meaning behind it? What are you guys like really pushing with that song? Well, we wrote the song, you know, a couple years ago when I think everyone was sort of feeling nervous. Um, you know, we felt that there was a division, you know, between people, you know, of, of all walks of life, you know, all over the country. Everyone felt divided, and this is a song of sort of just wanting to wanting to speak up or just at least say that hey I feel this way you know and, um, that's sort of what it's about that's awesome especially in like today's climate like it's good to have that reminder especially in such a fun song what else can we expect in the coming months six months or so anything you guys want to tease 
Well, we finished our album, um, mm-hmm. so we're really excited about that. We spent a lot of time working on it, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's done. And we're you know we're just really excited to be to put out more songs, and uh, so stay tuned for more stuff. Thanks so much, Allie. Coming up next, we sit down with Cody Co. and Noel Miller to chat about their tour. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Universities of Central Florida's place for relaxation, tranquility, and a good time. Students who crave the outdoors can experience the wonders of Lake Clare and all the benefits it has to offer. Lake Clare offers a wide variety of kayaks, wakeboards, canoes, and much, much more. All of this is free for UCF students and can be rented out every day of the year except for on football game days. Students can take advantage of the wide open spaces and throw around a frisbee with your friends or attack the ball with our sandy volleyball court. Come by the dock, sit down, and enjoy the beautiful view of Lake Clare's clear blue waters. Located just off the side of Gemini Boulevard and Greek Park Drive, this bubble of nature is one you must check out after finals week. For more information and rentals, visit our website so you can enjoy Lake Claire today. Culture Pop, I am so... Welcome back to Culture Pop. I am so excited to be able to share with you guys this interview with Cody Co and Noel Miller. These guys are truly one in a million and are just as funny in person as they are online. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, I'm your host Shania Richberg and we are back with some exclusive sit-down interviews. Today we are hanging out with Cody Co and Noel Miller. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having Hello. us. Thank happening. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So we talked a little bit about how Orlando's treating you. Tell me again. Why is it so great? <laughs> um, I mean man. Pff, man. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever heard of a place called Margaritaville? No. No. <laughs> yeah, we've been here about 24 hours. It's been great. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. weather's been nice to us. First time we've seen sun in like a month. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'm from Miami, so like sun is all I know. Like yeah. I know nothing else but sun. Yeah. And you're yeah, originally just... from? Uh, L.A. L.A. What about you? Canada. Canada. Yeah. Wow. Calgary, Alberta. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Liz, so let's hop into it. So first of all, congratulations on your tour. Thank you. Sold out every show. Crazy. You all about halfway done? Uh, no. No? We've we got a week left. left. Yeah, we oh. got like nine shows left. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So yeah. what's the reaction? What has that been like? Uh, as reaction as far as us or people? Y you. Um, <laughs> it's been wild. It's definitely flown by. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone way faster than we thought it would go. Mm -hmm. It's a weird, it was a weird thing, like you feel, it feels like it's gone really fast, but we also feel like we've been touring for 20 years. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's been exhausting, it's been everything that you could possibly think of. It's been right. amazing, it's been exhausting, it's been, I mean, we've been through like every single type of weather you can possibly go through. Okay. Yeah. I got the flu randomly. Yeah. Goodness. So it's just been everything. <laughs> yeah. But it's been awesome. That's great. Yeah, great. And then them. you mentioned fan reactions. What are they thinking? Are they loving it? Yeah. Have you guys yeah. been crushing it? Yeah. Ev everyone <laughs> is super like into the show and, and everyone is different, but they're all a good time. Yeah. That's great to hear. All right. So combined, you both are hella popular, <laughs> right? Over 3 million subscribers. Um, some of your videos have up to like 6 million. Yeah. How, how does that, how does that even feel? Like, I'm sure it's interesting to see like the millions of subscribers actually coming out to your shows and supporting. Yeah. What is that like for both of you? Um, uh, it's insane. Yeah. It really is crazy seeing people in, in real life. And we say this during the show, but it's like, it's a different thing when you see a number on a screen and you're like, right. yeah. I don't even know how, how far does this go? How real is this? Yeah, is it just and then like, you see the people in real life that are like, we love your videos and it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah it's you, surreal. It, it, I guess for me, it's one thing to watch a video that's free. You know, there's no commitment there, but to like, you know, spend your time and like come out and you know, watch the show, it, it just means a lot. So, yeah, surreal to say the least. Yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, that's Cringe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite videos, popular bit Thank on you. your channel. And then the Tiny Meat Gang podcast. <laughs> so, and then now you guys are doing like comedic rap duos yeah. too. Can yeah. you talk to us a little bit about that? And um, for those who don't know, like what is what are those like? Sure. Um, so, That's Cringe is a series. Uh, we started on Cody's channel. Uh, I don't really know. It started one day at work. We like both came across this video of a like a homemade sex robot, and we were like, 
you know, Cody was like, well, we should react to this. And I, I had never done that before. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So it actually started with that's gross. And then it just kind of evolved a little bit and then just developed into that's cringe. And out of that, uh, we created the podcast. And on the podcast, uh, you know, we, we made a song kind of in that path, making fun of Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. And Cody on the podcast was like, we should try to make a mixtape. And then it just... <laughs> So it, that's what it is. It always just starts with like, eh, why don't we just like try this and see if it's yeah. funny? Yeah. And then yeah. which just snowballs. <laughs> yeah. Do you all ever like when you're going through these thought processes, are you ever like, is that that funny? Or like how fans react to it? But you guys are like seriously funny. Oh, so thank you. It doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it def that definitely happens. Yeah, we question a lot. <laughs> I mean, we film cringe for like an hour and a half and then I edit it down to like 12 minutes. Yeah. So then we say a lot of not funny shit in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. I want the raw uncut footage. <laughs> yeah, no, no you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, so as far as Yul's rap career, what was the inspiration behind the idea? I know you said something that's just like with the Jake Paul thing just kind of like popped in your head. Yeah. yeah we, we were like, basically I was making that video and I was like, I want to make a parody song. Yeah. Um, just because like music was something that I'd never tried mm -hmm. before and I was like, I think I could maybe create something that's uh -huh. got a little bit of entertainment value or anything, right? right? And so I was like, I was like, maybe I can just make a beat and Noel can rap over it or something like that. Yeah. And so, cause he actually used to like rap. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. back in the day days? Yeah, like high school, <laughs> part of college. And I mean, okay. you know, we were whack. We weren't like, that's why you never heard it. But um, yeah, I had rapped a ton. And at first I was like, uh, Cody convinced me to do it. Right. And then, um, yeah, just from there we just, Music's fun for us. It's, it's mm -hmm. low risk, and everyone knows we're not trying to be rappers. Right. So but yeah. Parody. Yeah, yeah. And parody works. Yeah. yeah. So do, can we foresee any more of those coming out in the future? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Uh, as soon as we get home, we're gonna rest up a little bit and then mm -hmm. get to work. Yeah, you deserve it. Thank Take you. a little nap. Thank you. Or two. <laughs> all right. So what are some of um, you all's both all-time favorite vines from back in the day? R.I.P. Man. Fine. I like the. Let's see. Skinny penis one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's an absolute classic. <laughs> Peanut butter baby. That's a good one. See, we got a fan over yeah. here. The one <laughs> he's like, yeah, that shit's gold. The one that sticks out to me is the like the bodybuilder baby, okay. but it's like an edit. He like he like grabs like I don't know something. It kind of looks like a weight. He like throws it on the ground, and then the edit is him like screaming like a demon, and the screen like. Is that goes all fine? It it's was on Vine. Video, no, 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 that oh, was on Vine. Okay. Yeah, he just like picks up a, a toy and he's like, <laughs> so. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so we'll. So there's a lot of like Vine like apps. So a popular one, and actually YouTube has a lot of ads for TikTok. Yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Is it gonna take over Vine, or nothing we, can never replace? Me and, me and TikTok have beef. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's yeah. beef? Your beef? Yeah. What's tea, sis? <laughs> <laughs> so they like. They like used, or I, I like did a stupid video where I was making <laughs> stupid TikToks. I was like, what was I doing? Copying other people's TikToks. Yeah, that's, that's what, what you're doing, yeah. And then they claimed my video because it had like copyrighted music in it or whatever, mm -hmm. which I get it. But then they used my footage in their ads. Yeah. So After then they're they just... using my TikToks to promote TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is just slapping me right in the face. Another crazy one is um, I did a, I, I did a, like a, on my Instagram story, I was in like a like a, like a karate suit basically, mm -hmm. and I just like just do a video where I screamed, and that was it. Someone put that on TikTok, and they're using that for ads too now. Crazy. Yeah. So. Crazy. They're ruthless. Yeah. Listen, savage. Yeah. Savage. AF. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely TikTok. I think is what Vine was becoming. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and then like, what was Vine shutting down like for you all? Were you at like a lost it, or you like nah? Like let me just. Go ahead and hop over to YouTube. No, by the time it, it shut down, it was pretty acknowledged by everyone mm -hmm. that it was it was a matter of time. Right, we so knew. I, a, a lot of people were kind of already experimenting with their stuff. Cody was on YouTube. I was kind of making sketches on YouTube as well. Okay. So it wasn't really a big surprise. Just okay. more like a, oh, damn, sad. Too, too bad, so sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. All right, so uh, let's get into a little bit more serious topic. Um, with YouTube and demonetization, that has been a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, how has that affected you all's channels? It's, I mean, it went through a, a really bad period mm -hmm. where, like, you know, the CPMs were, like, super, super low. Mm -hmm. um, it sucks, but it was like, you know, we love making videos, so it's yeah. like, we just kept doing it, sort of. Right. And it's gotten a little bit better, but then 
now YouTube is super sensitive to the stuff that they choose to demonetize. Yeah. So now it's like, it, you'll get flagged for yeah. having anything, yeah. like any sort of skin yeah. in your video, That's you'll you. get flagged for it. Flag for that. Flag yeah. for that. Flag for that. that yeah, this done? video. Yeah, done. 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 Demonetized, yeah. sorry. Down. No <laughs> sneezing. Yeah. Right. That's inappropriate. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, you just gotta be careful now. I'm like using censorship and st stuff like that. Yeah. For st strategically so that I don't, I don't know, it's just a, it's a game, you Yeah, know? it's not always very clear what they demonetize yeah. by, so right. you're like, yeah, it's a lot, it's guesswork, but yeah. yeah. And I think across the board too, not only with like comedians or parodies, I think like overall <coughs> across YouTube people are experiencing that huge like, well, I'm breastfeeding my kid, like nope, damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Like, yeah, you too. But I'm glad that you all are still, that you're not letting that affect you. Like, you're still making videos and you have fans that, like, yeah. love yeah. you regardless. Yeah, at the so. end of the day, it's, like, still the platform that's given us everything we have. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a little bit annoying. Oh. The, way, the way I look at it is, like, for, I guess for, you know, comedy, like, for stand-ups, you know, if a club would were to put restrictions or kind of, you know, basically it's like this. If we were to perform at a club and suddenly they go, hey, your set's got to be clean now. You can't curse anymore. Yeah. It's not going to stop you from getting right. on stage. Like, you're still going to get up there. Right. So, I same wouldn't. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I can't cuss. Why not? Oh, frick this place, yeah. man. Yeah. What if they this pay you bull mad crap. bank? What? What if they pay you mad bank? <laughs> yeah, then I'd probably yeah, 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 yeah. consider. All right. <laughs> I'm a big sellout. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Hey, money talks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last question. Um, what can we expect from you both in the coming months? Obviously, you're going to finish your tour. We got yeah. some, I know you guys got some crazy content. You're waiting to drop after y'all go to sleep. I think <laughs> I'm going to be wearing this shirt for the next month. Yeah. Turn up. Just I like getting drunk. And yeah. <laughs> no, I, so after we get back from tour, we got like a little, like a month break, and we're actually going back out for a couple more weeks. Oh, okay. So we'll, Commitment. Yeah, yeah. So um, touring is going to be a large part of this year, but on top of that, um, our next music project for sure, uh, yeah. doing a lot of work there. And we'll keep making videos, uh, Love Island, That's Cringe, all yeah. that stuff. Um, you know, just, just staying with what the people like and uh, listening if they want something different. I love that. Yeah. What about for you? Same. Same. We're going to get back, rest a little bit, but then pretty much get back into it. Yeah. We have like a lot of plans for new music, um, new videos. Yeah. Um, and then like continually working on the podcast. That's always kind of just like a thing that we're always working on. So, yeah. and then yeah, back on tour and then hopefully touring more later in the year too, too. So we'll see. Awesome. That's great. I know I said that was the last question, but I got another one. Sure. Fight me. Um, <laughs> that's fine. So I know you guys have been on tour for a long time. What has it been like, like touring together? Like um, you're constantly with each other on set with each other. Like, what is that like? All peaches and cream? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nicole. No, it's been it's been great. We honestly spend just as much time together, like when we're at home, yeah, Perfect. working on whatever. So yeah, it's honestly like no different. I love that. Yeah, it was funny because like going into the tour, uh, buddy Spock, shout out Spock. He was like, "There's <laughs> always one fight on the bus," right. and I think that happened today. I was like mad about something, and the only thing that happened was Cody was like, "Stop thinking about it." It's like the most aggressive it's been. <laughs> and then we and then we fought. And then we oh. yeah, then we beat each other up. Yeah. <laughs> Who won? Uh, Who won? we both lost. Yeah, we both lost. <laughs> that's fair, that's yeah. fair. We're old and we have bad backs. So. It's okay. I got bad knees. It's okay. all good. Um, <laughs> but that's it for me. Do you guys awesome. did I miss anything? You wanna say something else? No. Um, no. we're just happy to that anyone wants to hear us talk. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're happy to, to stop in and you know, awesome. do this. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Cody. Thank you so much, Noel. We appreciate you both for being here. Um, and that's a wrap. Bunch hey, we're Griswold, and we're hanging out with Culture Pop. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Must be nice. <laughs> You're famous. Experience. The sea. Art. Lifestyle. Travel. This is Seek to See More.
Welcome back to Culture Pop. Today we are joined by UCF's own Emily Nelson, or as many of you may know her as, Emily Enchanted. Thanks so much for joining us, Emily. Of course. All right, so are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. All right, <laughs> bet. So to start off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I am from Texas. I'm 20 years old. I just transferred here to UCF. Um, I used to go to school back in Oklahoma. I only went for about a year and a half before doing the Disney College program. So I did that, and that's how I got to be a character performer at Walt Disney World, and that's what I currently do seasonally. Awesome. What was the Disney College program like? I know a lot of people who came to UCF was interested in it or has gone through it. So for those who haven't, yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. It was. It's so cool. It's such a cool experience because you get to live and work at Walt Disney World. And for me, that was an absolute dream come true. Um, and so it's just a great way to take a semester off of college and to go and work at Disney World and kind of see if, if that's what you want to do. If you want to work for the Disney company later on or if you want to, I don't know, it really helps you figure out what you want to do. And it really helped me. Awesome, that's great. Okay, so you have over 30,000 followers on Instagram and over 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thinking about when you started out, do you think that would ever, that you'd ever become that large? Like, that's a oh, huge no. fan base. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. And it's honestly really, really overwhelming at times. Um, did not expect it, did not think it was going to happen, and it still kind of feels surreal sometimes. Oh my God, that's amazing though. Um, and then do you ever find yourself looking at feedback or comments um, and it kind of kind of get getting lost in the negativity? Or if so, like, how do you remain so positive? Because you're like such a bubbly person. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's really hard, not gonna lie. It's really hard and I try not to show it online as much and I just try to like deal with it like with friends and family. I kind of maybe talk to somebody about it if it is getting to me and I just, I don't think it's something to really give light to because it's not, negativity isn't important. It's important to be very positive. So that's what I try to do is just focus on the positivity. It is very hard, mm -hmm. but it's what I'm trying to do. That's great. And that's the best way to do it. Be positive, like the blood type. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, are there any YouTubers or Instagram accounts that you idol and would love to collaborate with? Oh, there's so many. Okay. Um, so many. I Surprisingly, I really like non-Disney YouTubers. And okay. I love like lifestyle YouTubers. My absolute favorite would be Marla Catherine. It's her and her sister, and they're just, they're so good. I just, I don't know. I love their videos. And um, some others, I love Haley Pham currently. I love Summer McKean. Oh, um, I liked Emma Chamberlain, James yeah. Charles, Shane Dawson. Yeah. Just, I, <laughs> I love goes YouTube. On. I could, any I one of them, I'll you collab too. with them. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to go to a rapid fire question round. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Disney World or Disneyland? Disney World. <laughs> Chocolate or sour? Chocolate. Heels or flats? Flats. Dresses or pants? Dresses. Rose gold or purple portion? Oh, rose gold. Ears or hat? Ears. Disney ears? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beach side or lake side? Uh, beach side. Popcorn or ice cream? Ice cream. Mickey or Minnie? Oh, both, but Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> North or south? Uh, south. Toy Story Mania or Slinky Dog Dash? Oh, that's my two, f uh, Slinky Dog Dash. <laughs> Boomerang or video? A video. Vine or TikTok? Vine. Dogs or cats? Dogs. UCF or USF? UCF. Duh. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so do you prefer Instagram or YouTube and explain your reason? Okay, so I... I would say I prefer YouTube because mm -hmm. there's just so much more you can do with it. There's so much you can do for other people. I find a lot of people message me saying how my videos really helped them. And I think that's really cool. And I don't think that Instagram can, I don't really think it can help people in that way. On the other hand, um, Instagram, it's so easy. It's so easy to snap a picture, edit it, and then post it. It takes, you know, a couple of minutes. Whereas YouTube, it takes a long time to yeah. edit a video, film the video and all that stuff. So that's why... I find myself posting on Instagram more, but I prefer YouTube. Awesome. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Emily, for joining us. It's of been course. such a pleasure. And thanks for you all. We'll be right back. Um